I'll talk about the only two, one of those apocalyptic revelations which I had in what I call the country of paper, which is Burma. And in Burma, everything is done with paper. When you have to get a visa, you have to fill out eight pieces of paper. I once jumped on a ferry without buying my five-cent ticket. It cost me an extra five-cent fine with eight pages of paper asking for my mother's name, her maiden name, my father's name, where they were born, all on some kind of tissue paper. But going there, when I lost my passport, this was the beginning of this revelation. Unbelievable. I was traveling with a Chinese friend and from Hong Kong, where I was living then. And when you go there to Burma, you have to bring a carton of 555 cigarettes and a bottle of black label whiskey, which, when you get there, you trade for enough money on the black market so you can survive your mandatory one week in Burma. Well, besides that, there was paper from getting the visa, paper which they gave us on the plane, and I was juggling all the papers. They gave me more papers after they stamped my passport. I juggled all the bottles and the whiskey, and I traded them all, and I had enough what's called chot, which is the Burmese currency. Well, we took a taxi, an old taxi that would have... I get 1948, 1949 taxi to this stingy, dingy Strand Hotel in Rangoon. And as I was unpacking, about 10 o'clock, this is important, my passport was missing. Where could it be? I didn't know what to do, but I went down with my friend. We went downstairs. There was a taxi driver from the airport, not ours. And he said, I'll drive you back to the airport. I know who the driver is. You'll probably find it. We drove, there was no other traffic at that time because there was a curfew of about 10 o'clock. He didn't seem to care. We got to the airport, they said, oh, your driver has gone back to his village. I thought, what can I do now? Well, what I did now was what the driver said, we will drive you to his village. I said, is it against the law? He said, don't worry. We drove up through the mountains, where no one was supposed to go, through more mountains, through the darkness, and on a plateau, perhaps 2,000, 1,500 feet high, he stopped the car, there was nothing anywhere around, he said, I better walk over to the village and I'll see the driver, because if you're a foreigner, they don't want to see you there, I said, fine. My Chinese friend was, he was very unhappy about the whole thing, I sat on this plateau and there was nothing except darkness, all, there was nothing, pure darkness, stars, you could see a few little candles because there was no electricity in Burma, and it was now midnight when the temple gongs would begin, except that in Burma every clock is five or ten minutes before or after every other clock, so with the first gong came second gongs, I could see nothing, but in the darkness came all of the gongs from every single part of this dark universe, one gong resonating against the other, with nothing there except the stars and those sounds. Now, when I'm not here, I work as a classical music critic in New York, and there was one composer named Alexander Skryabin, a mystic Russian, who once imagized a universal symphony where bells would hang from clouds and where people would fly in balloons and do things. Well, I actually saw it. This was a revelation that was quite... I cannot think of anything which is more, more mystical to my mind, and I'm not a mystical person. The next thing that happened was that the man came down the path, traipsing down from the village. I knew he couldn't have had my passport, but he came over. I said, well, and he said, oh, here's your passport. I said, you found it. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, well, I, I want to give this man something. No, no, don't, don't be silly, don't be silly. It was now about 12.30. The bells were still ringing. We went down the mountains. We came back to the Strand Hotel, and I took out. I hadn't even changed money yet, except you know, all I had was this crap which they'd given me for the cigarettes and the whiskey. And I said, you know, like, here's $20. He said, what are you talking about? He said, would you mind, would you mind if you perhaps gave me $5 for the gasoline? I said, I, I have to give you more. No, 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 it was just a favor to be done. And I realized then, though I proclaimed no religion for myself, that I had seen two visions of Buddhism, that 
night. It was the resonance in the heavens, which you, which you cannot, which cannot be imagined anywhere else. And it was the resonance within this man's heart and his contentment. And I knew that that night the Buddha himself would sleep very, very comfortably. Thank you. <laughs>